What is up guys, Little Dog Dog here. Today I'm bringing you a quest guide for Morning's End, part one. Now the quest requirements for this quest are the completion of the quest Sheep Herder, um, Roving Elves, and Big Chompy Bird Hunting. Now um, these are just the three quests you have to have completed to start this quest. However, there are prerequisite quests to some of those quests that you're gonna also have to complete. Now there are also skill requirements for this quest. Those are a non-boostable 60 ranged and a boostable 50 thieving. Um, so you need to have these skill requirements or be able to boost to that 50 thieving to be able to finish this quest. Now there are several needed items um, used during the course of this quest. Um, these are the items you're going to need. They are um, one piece of bear fur, two pieces of silk, one blue, red, yellow, and green dye. Um, you can need more than that if you make a mistake. And uh, I also recommend buying them during the quest. I'll tell you when you can buy them because they're way cheaper than buying off the Grand Exchange and you can get as many as you need. You're going to need a feather and a piece of leather. At least one Toad Crunchy. I recommend buying the pre-made as they're a lot cheaper. However, people do merch them a lot if you'd rather just make your own. You're going to need a Magic Log, um, your Big Book of Bangs, and around 10 to 20 coal. Leave those in your bank. I'll tell you when you can get those. So what you're going to need in your first inventory is that piece of bear fur, those two silk, the feather, the leather, um, the magic log, the big book of bangs, and um, any of the recommended items you want to bring on the next screen. And those recommended items are one anti-poison and around five food. You probably won't need the five food as there's only uh, one combat scenario in this in which you have to fight a regular NPC. It's just a mourner. So you probably won't need that much food, but if you feel uncomfortable and you'd rather bring food, just bring food. Once you kill the mourner, you can drop it. Just also make sure that you have seven free inventory spaces to pick up everything the mourner drops that you're going to need during the quest. To start, you're going to speak to Alund and Isopdar. Um, this is just uh, slightly north and west of the Lodestone in Tyrnwen. To get to Alund, there are a couple traps you're going to have to pass. Um, it is the same place where you started Roving Elves. So that's just where you're going, and if you've done Roving Elves, you use my guide, you know that when you get there, she might not be there. She changes places every five minutes, but it's easiest just to hop worlds or wait for her. So make sure you watch out for that tripwire you head across, and uh, just continue through the dense forest. And then you have to cross a couple sticks here to get to Alund. Once you're here, you're going to want to talk to Alund, click through the dialogue, and choose the first chat option. Uh, to go visit uh, Arianwin in Letya. So that's the first chat option. Let's, yes, let's go see him now. And you'll be teleported to Letya, and you'll get a crystal teleport seed. Now you're going to want to talk to Arianwin while you're here, and uh, click through the dialogue, and he's going to tell you about um, all the mourners coming into Arianwin and what the mourners actually are, which is just elves who are controlling West Ardoin. So he wants you to investigate the mourners, but before we do that, at a point later in the quest, we're going to need a barrel of coal tar, so you're going to want to head to the terrace camp, just home teleport to Tyrannwyn. And it's back the same way to see Alund, just past her clearing, so you're going to have to go through the dense forest once more. Cross the tripwire and back through the dense forest once again. Except this time you're going to walk past Elune's clearing, in front of the catapult, and through the dense forest in front of the terrace camp. Now behind the big tent in the back you're going to find barrels. You only need one but bringing two could be recommended. Uh, I brought two. And then you're going to home teleport back to Tyrannwin again and get the barrels, or and fill the barrels with coal tar um, where I just showed you. So it's pretty much south from the lodestone. Um, in the water, you just want to click take tar. Fill both your barrels. And now you're going to head to Arandar. Now the quickest way to get here is to home teleport to Eagle's Peak and just walk south. Mm -hmm. 
You also could use the Crystal Teleport Seed and go back to Letya and walk there from Letya. But it only has so many charges on it, so might as well just home teleport to Eagle's Peak because that's free. This is the part where you're going to need those seven free inventory spaces, so um, make sure you have it. You can get the seven free inventory spaces after you kill a mourner, but just make sure you do kill a mourner because um, you're going to need their gear. You don't need to kill more than one because one drops everything you need. So you need to pick up the whole kit, including the gas mask and the mourner letter, everything but the bones that they drop, and now you're going to head to Taverly to speak to the guy who's washing his clothes. You need to wash out the blood stains in the top. Now, once you're in Taverly, walk south and then go east, across the bridge, and speak to the guy washing his clothes. He's going to tell you about his soap, but also tell you you can't have it. So, here, if you don't have an extra inventory space for the soap you have to steal, you can drop your bear fur or anything you want. Choose the first chat option to steal the soap. And then use the soap on the bloody top. And then you can drop your bucket and the soap if you want, but you might need it again if you lose your top. And then equip everything but the trousers because you still can't. So now you're gonna wanna head back to Letya. Use your crystal teleport seed. and uh, you spawn right next to it when you teleport, but you wanna go in the shop just to the north. Choose the third chat option, do you mend clothes when talking to the shopkeeper? And the shopkeeper will tell you she can mend your trousers for two silk and a bear fur. Now you're gonna to have to wait, but if you don't have the dyes, this is the opportunity to buy the dyes as well as uh, organize your inventory and bank any items you no longer need. So what I did first is I went and banked all my old combat equipment because I'm not going to need it anymore. I have to go back anyway, so I should have just showed you the dice here. But, you know, live and learn. But you can talk to Orianwin, trade them, and it will show you the die shop um, where she sells a bunch really cheap. And you can just buy these and use these as the dice you're going to need, as well as coming back here if you do mess up in the future. If when you talk to Orinwin and she doesn't mention immediately that your trousers are finished, they're not done yet. So you can wear the trousers, make sure you have nothing else equipped, no weapon, no nothing, just the mourner gear equipped, and bank everything else. And now, um, for your second inventory, you're going to need that full set of mourner's gear. One of each die that I mentioned in the beginning. Or more, you might need up to two if you do screw up in the future. You're going to need your feather, one to two barrels of coal tar, depending on how many you took. You're going to need your recommendation letter, one leather, one magic log, one big book of bangs, and one toad crunchies, toad crunchies or more in case you accidentally eat them. Once you have your full mourner set equipped, you're going to want to head to the mourner's headquarters in West Ardoyne. You're going to start doing missions for the mourners. So head to Artie. However you want. I like to home teleport, as I know everybody has that. And then you're going to head over to West Ardoin. Once you get through the Ardoin gates, the mortar's headquarters is just to your north. Make sure you have no weapons equipped or anything. Head through the front door the door to the west, and then the trap door next to the stairs. You'll get put into the basement, and then head south and talk to the mourner's, uh, head, head, the head mourner, sorry, and he's going to tell you that he accepts that your letter of recommendation, and he asks if you want to know about what, why the mourners are doing what they're doing. Just choose no, because you can't if you just keep choosing yes, and he'll tell you, good, let's get on with it, and now he wants you to go torture a gnome to help repair their sheep dying equipment. It's basically a paintball gun that he needs to fix for you because that's what we need dyes for. Um, 
but you just have to go torture him with the feathers in the toad countries until he fixes the item for you so right next door to the head mourner is the gnome so talk to the gnome and click through the dialogue until he tells you what um, would work to torture him which is he hates being tickled and he loves toad crunchies and that is going to be the third chat option when it's an option um, choose you said about toad crunchies and being tickled so after the dialogue ends you're going to want to use your feather on the gnome click through the dialogue this time and then once more use your feather on the gnome but you'll also dangle some toad crunchies in front of his face after you've tortured him enough he'll say he's had enough and the dialogue ends, you're going to want to right click on him and release him from the torture rack. And he'll take the um, item from you and the soft leather, as well as a toad crunchy. And the magic log. Sorry, I forgot about the magic log. You have to wait for him to repair it, um, like you did with the trousers earlier. It's about a minute, and once he's done, you'll get it back, and now you're going to want to head to Ooglog. We need to go back to Rance's cave from when we did Big Chompy bird hunting. So from the lodestone, it's northeast. And we're going into the cave to get the ogre bellows. Now in the northwest portion of the cave, there is a chest with a rock on top of it. Just open the chest and search it. And you're going to get that ogre bellows and head back out of the cave over to where the frogs are located. Now what you're going to want to do here is use a die on the ogre bellows and then use the die filled ogre bellows on a frog to bloat it up. So you can see that you fill the die with each color. If you brought extra die, it may be beneficial here to um, get two of each color frog. So two green, two yellow, two red, two blue. However, you can just to save money, do one at a time if that's what you want to do. You won't need the dies at any other point during the quest after this. So um, I would recommend getting one of each because I did have to come back when I messed up. Once you have one of each color frog or more, if you're smart, um, you're going to want to head back to Ardoin. Now you can see that this picture bring, begins at 1425 if you need to come back to it. Um, this is just where each color sheep is located and where they roam. Red, blue, yellow, and green. I'm only going to show that picture once, so that's why I put when it begins up there. And I mentioned it just so you know that you can go back to it if you get lost. So from the lodestone, just head west. Use a uh, red toad on the fixed device. Right click the fixed device to wield it. And then go to your worn items. When you're near the sheep, right click it and select fire. You're gonna get this interface, which on the right corner um, has the directions to move it. The top left shows you what color uh, frog you have loaded. And the button in the middle of the arrows is the fire button. So you just have to make sure that a sheep is in the middle. You only have to hit them once. And it is possible to miss if they move after you shoot, which is what happened to me. And you'll see it in a horrible edit in the future because I don't mess up and you guys aren't allowed to see that because I'm perfect. Alright, so the next sheep is the green sheep. You can examine them if you don't know what color they are. You're going to have to unequip that device, use a green frog on it, equip it again, and wield it. It is possible to click out of the device on accident too. If you click the arrows in the wrong place, a little too close to the fire button, it's really annoying. 
but you know, it's worth it for the for Priff, right? Do it for Priff. The next sheep are yellow. They're outside of the fishing guild. So load the yellow, wield the device, and then fire the device. You'll see the horrible edit here in a second. Because I missed the yellow sheep. Oh yeah, did you see that? Oh, that was beautiful. Nothing happened there. I didn't have to go all the way back to Ooglock because I didn't get an extra prod. The final sheep are blue. They're just to the west near the moss giants. And once you've got all four groups of sheep recolored, you're going to head back to the head mourner in a West Ardoin. You're going to want to go back into the basement of the headquarters. Make sure you unequip the device as you won't be let in if you have anything other than Mourner's gear equipped. And you're going to talk to the head mortar once again in the basement. Except your task this time is to spread the plague of West Ardoin to more people in West Ardoin rather than just changing the color of some sheeps. So what the head mortar tells you is that they were poisoned by something a while back that resembled the plague. He wants you to find out what that was and how to recreate it. That just so happens to be the rotten apple that you put in their stew in a previous quest, so you need to go get that rotten apple and bring it to Elena, who you freed from Western Doin in a previous quest. So the rotten apple is just northwest of the uh, Mourner's headquarters. You can see it's right here where I picked it up, and you're going to take that rotten apple to Elena. Elena is on the west side of East Ardoin, on this side of the river. Her house is located right here, and she has a very long dialogue option, or a very long uh, chat box. So she asks you to tell her about uh, everything that's happened up to this point with the Elf Quest series, and your character relays everything about that. So um, starting here, I just sped it up to four times because I actually went through and I kind of read it all, and it just took took up way too much time. Uh, just leaving it in the quest, so or leaving it in the quest guide, so I, I sped it up just to leave it in um, so it's still there, so you guys can still follow along without thinking you did something wrong. So you're going to hand Elena the Rotten Apple uh, at the end of the dialogue option, and now you have to wait, um, as you did earlier with the trousers and uh, the gnome with the paintball device, to find out what the toxin is on the Rotten Apple so that you can help spread that. I hate these types of things in quests when you have to wait. Like, what is my time to you, huh? I paid for this membership. I shouldn't have to wait for anything. It's BS, you know? Whatever. Talk to Elena. And she'll tell you that she managed to isolate it. However, you need to get more rotten apples to get enough to poison all of West Ardoin. So to get more rotten apples, you need to go to the apple farm just um, northwest of West Ardoin. It's west of the combat training camp, south of the Trinum stronghold. You can see the piles of rotten apples are right there. Once you're in, you're going to grab one of the barrels on the floor and use it on the rotten apples. And then use the bucket of apples on the big apple barrel. Your character is going to squash them all down and then get it out of the uh, tap. Now you can pick up another barrel here, but you don't need to because I'm an idiot. Um, but once you have the barrel of apples, you're going to want to head to uh, the nearest bank. I just home teleported to Birthwarp because I knew that the bank was right by the lodestone. And you're going to fill up your inventory, however much 
however many free inventory spaces you have with coal. <coughs> Sorry. And then you're going to head to Remington to the still to get a barrel of naphtha. Make sure you have your big book of bangs in your inventory still. As well as those barrels of coal tar. Home teleport to Port Serum and head to Remington. Now, using the still is slightly complicated. You're going to use a barrel of naphtha and turn the tar regulator twice. Once the gauge at the top left reaches into the green, you're going to turn the pressure valve clockwise once and maintain it in the green. Now you can start adding coal to make the right gauge move towards green. Add it slowly. You're going to want to add two at first to get the gauge moving. And don't let the gauge go above the green or you'll spoil your barrel. It doesn't have to be all the way in the green to start distilling as you can see. It does go faster though. My own tip would be if it's not in the green and it's going down, add coal. If it's still going up, don't add coal. Once it's distilled and you exit out, you'll have your barrel of naphtha. You're going to want to drop your other barrel if you have one and then use your barrel of naphtha on the apple barrel and then use the uh, uh, naphtha apple mix on the sieve. Now you get some toxic, nap toxic naphtha and you're going to head to a range. This one is on the way but it does have a thieving requirement to get in. So you can home teleport to Ardoin um, as it's on the way to the Warner headquarters. And you have to use a range to get the naphtha. So you can pick lock the door right here to get into the range. It can be kind of difficult to pick the lock if you'd rather just go somewhere else. And then use the uh, toxic naphtha on the cooking range. And now you're going to have the two toxic powders. You're going to want to go back to West Ardoin. And once you're in the gates, there are two places you need to uh, poison. The first one is going to be in the church, just to your left when you walk in. You're going to want to climb upstairs, then use the toxic powder on the grain sacks. It'll say nothing interesting happens, but as long as it's out of your inventory, you've done it. And then the second one is in the castle here. You want to go in the doors and use the toxic powder on one of the grain sacks here. Once you've used both your toxic powders on the grain sacks, you're going to head back to the head mourner. He's going to tell you that he has another job for you. However, you won't be able to do it yet. And he congratulates you and thanks you for doing a good job. Now, after you finish talking to him, that's going to be quest complete. If this helped you, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment below if you have any questions, tips, suggestions, or complaints. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, definitely do that. And if you're bored, check out some of my other stuff. I do boss guides, quest guides, and event guides. Thanks.